Okay, this is a video to demonstrate how to use the Garmin 76 CSX. And we have the 76 here. Just a quick go around of the buttons that we're going to see. Down in the lower left, we have the quit button. Coming around clockwise, we have the on off button in red. We have the find button for getting to our waypoints and setting a waypoint. We have two buttons at the top, one on the left called in and one on the right called out for zooming in and out when you're in the map sections. We have a page button for specific pages. We have a menu button for accessing menus within each page. And we have an enter button down the lower right for actually entering uh, selections and moving into submenus. To turn on the Garmin, you depress the red button for a couple seconds, hear the beep, and let it come up. Now, as it comes up, it's fairly dark. It's okay out in the daylight, but for our videoing, we need to increase the backlighting. Just to press this red button once, and you get a backlight. And we can now easily see our page. The first page that we start up with is the satellite or acquiring a satellite page. This will show you which satellites are available. It gives you a sky plot of your specific area. Each of these icons is a represents a satellite. And down below we would get a bars identifying which satellites um, are being used for our positioning. And those that are being used will be shown in black bars. Those not will be hollow bars. And of course, your location currently is right dead center in this sky plot. And you can figure out which satellites are where. Position yourself perhaps uh, by moving around trees, uh, other side of buildings and things like that to get the best satellite configuration. What we're going to do is just step through each of the pages. This is the satellite page. Next page, if we press the page button, but before we move to that, we're getting in a menu where we can use the GPS off or on, uh, go continue without using it. Um, this is because I'm recording this video indoors, and of course we're not getting any signal. So we'll just pr press enter to select that option, and we'll continue with the GPS off. Okay, so the GPS is off. And we have moved on. We're going to move on with the next page. And the next page is the trip. The trip page. And inside here, we have the option to control a number of the data frames here, the data items. And they can range from this one is for um, uh, time, time of day. Uh, in the right, upper right, upper, excuse me, upper left is the pointer. We have the off course uh, indicator, accuracy, uh, time of destination, time to destination, bearing, and as we move down further, we have our current position would be shown as well as distance to destination. Now, you can control these data elements. And if we press the menu structure, we get the menu for the trip odometer. And in there, we can reset everything. And this is a function that you will want to use fairly often. And to access that function, you would press Enter. And what we have is a submenu. And by default, these are checked on. These are the items that would be reset were we to go down and say Apply. There are other items towards the bottom called uh, delete, save, delete all waypoints, and delete all routes. It's likely you'd want to do this with each new trip out to the river and clean out everything before you put in new data points. However, you want to make sure that if you have any data points that you added that are not backed up in a file somewhere, that you download them off the GPS unit in the uh, user's manual. Often what we uh, will do is uh, toggle down and this circular area here on the garment is a toggle or rocker button. I can hit the bottom part of it and toggle down until I highlight the
those items I want to check and then if I press enter I will check them on. Now obviously I want to, I'm going to clean out everything so I could just toggle all the way down to a select all and toggle them on and then once we're done we can either unselect all or we can select all. So select all go all the way down to the apply press the enter button to actually activate it and then it gives you one last chance to change your mind and by default it's going to select cancel over here this is highlighted and by using the rocker button we can highlight the OK and then press the enter button again and it wipes everything out <coughs> now if we go back to this menu button here and the menu button we had reset we've looked at that there's other things having to do with big numbers in case you're having a little trouble seeing some of this data you can go for big numbers that of course will limit how many data fields you can display down the next item down here is data fields and we can click on that or hit enter once it's highlighted and then each of these data fields can be modified if we notice how pointer is activated press the enter button and we'll get the options that we can instead of pointer we could decide to uh, display speed overall average here we could zoom on down you, you could store velocity and so forth so this whole list you pick what you want and then just say enter and it would then update this field to be in this case uh, s storing uh, water speed okay so you can control what is being shown within the screen in each of these data fields next page is a mapping page and it shows you your location up here in whatever coordinate system you're using we were set for UTM so it would show it in meters <clears throat> and down next down would show your distance to destination and it would show it either in uh, miles feet or it might show it in meters and kilometers depending on whether you're set for statue or for metric and then further down it's a little harder to see perhaps but we have a map section here and inside the map section there's be an, a hollow arrow with an N in it for north there's going to be a solid triangle that is your position and as you move that pointed the pointed part of the triangle will show your current direction and if we had a waypoint, <clears throat> which I think we do have one here, it would show you the distance and the line that you would need to travel to the waypoint. And you could track that line and, uh, and navigate to your waypoints. So that's the, um, the, essentially the mapping page. And of course, like the other, we have menu options and we can set the different data fields if I was to go into that you can see that we can have one wide field and a big map we can have two data fields two wide data fields and so forth and you can make changes to these and and it would rearrange how these data fields look and of course if I just quit if I wanted to change what's inside these what's recorded I would do that the same way as I did on the other one I would go here I would change the data fields here enter that and then you see I have data fields highlighted I can toggle down to highlight the destination and then if I pre press enter I can put different things in there besides destination so you have the choice of picking how the data fields how many are on the screen and whether they're large or or smaller data fields as well as identifying what values are going to be put in those data fields I use quit to get out of a menu again to get out and then I can page once more this is the navigation page it shows a compass often referred to also the compass page if we had a direction if we were going to waypoint there would be a big black arrow here uh, if you use the compass page the trick is that uh, first you start walking to make sure the compass gets updated correctly and knows the direction that you're heading and then once you have walked uh, a few meters then the compass should snap out over and and be correct and then the arrow will point you in the direction you should go you should hold this unit uh, out in, in front of you uh, with the, um, the top away from you and then that way you just follow the arrow uh, and it should lead you to the, your waypoint. We have it set up to show three data fields. We have two course, 
the distance to the course, distance to the destination, and your current location, which will be updated as you go. Besides the compass, we have an altimeter page. It's something not terribly useful for us in the on the SAV, but if you're traveling uh, and ter doing terrestrial mapping and things like this, this would give you your current um, elevational information and profiles. Okay, and the next page gives us a menu structure. It's the main menu where we can do such things as um, we can look at tracks, we can toggle down to setup, and this is where we can set the various elements within the GPS, such as the projection units and things like that that we need. So if once you highlight the icon name, you can press the enter button and you will go enter the setup submenu. And inside the submenu we have things like system we could set up. What we're going to talk about setting up right now is units down at the bottom. You would use the toggle button to toggle down to that units icon which is highlighted now and then press enter. And inside here we can set the units. Currently I have it set for UTM, UPS, that's what you should set for for the SAV project. NAT 83 it'll come out. Those are the same coordinates that uh, you should be given when they send you a text file for your transects and locations. I have distance and speed in metric. I have the elevation in feet. Again, somewhat unnecessary. I have the depth in feet. I have the temperature in Fahrenheit and I have the uh, pressure in inches. Now whether you want metric or whether you want um, statue is yours up to you. Um, <clears throat> if we go ahead and select metric or go into this option here for, for distance and speed you notice we have selections here and our, and our choices are basically uh, yards is the smallest, uh, met, then meters, then statute, mi statute and miles and then we're into nautical miles. So if you go metric <coughs> you can uh, it would show you uh, meters and feet, or excuse me, meters and kilometers. If you go yards, it would show you yards and feet. Um, the other thing is, if you go to statue, it will show you miles and feet. Um, the only advantage I've seen of any of these over another is that if we actually set a specific proximity waypoint, you can only set the alarm distance to one one hundredth of this unit so it'd be one one hundredth of a yard uh, it'd be one one hundredth of a uh, of a if it's metric it's one one hundredth of a kilometer if it's a statue it's one one hundredth of a mile so of course one one hundredth of a kilometer or one one hundredth of a mile is approximately uh, 30 meters versus 52 feet so there's not a large difference between these two obviously if you do a third of a uh, one one hundredth of a yard it's a very small so big trade-off um, so we're really dealing with metric or statue pick whichever one you feel most comfortable with whether you feel comfortable dealing with feet or meters it's, it's fine to you uh, it's up to you okay so once you pick the one you want let's go back to say meters then then you're done as long as these are set this way you can just quit out of this menu and you'll be fine now the last menu or icon we might want to get to, we can get to with a find button up here. So if we go to find, we find our waypoints. And this is one you're going to use a lot. Here's the waypoint icon. Okay, highlight that and then press enter. And we go into our waypoints. Right now we don't have any waypoints in. That's because I reset it. I wiped everything out. If you we had, if you still don't find anything, you can also hit a submenu here, and you'll notice that you can select your waypoints by name or by nearest. Sometimes people find no waypoints here, and they know they're in there. And the problem is that if this is set to nearest, it will stop looking for waypoints if they're too far away. So you may have to hit this submenu, go into the submenu and set it for find by name and then you will see all the waypoints listed and you would pick them out. Let's quit out of that and quit go further out. Okay, we'll visit the waypoints in a little bit once I add some data.